Hey guys, before the video begins, I would like to make a very important announcement in regards to a new channel made by a friend of mine, Kelly Productions. He has created a new channel named The Watch. It's a channel dedicated to making superhero films and miniseries of a new universe that has been created and named The Watch. And the first film is out right now. If you follow me on Twitter, Instagram, or even on this very channel, you know I've spoken about a film that's been involved that I've been involved with. Well, this is it. The Midnight Warden. I'd highly appreciate it if you guys subscribed to this channel, liked the video, turned on notifications, and shared this film with your friends so we can make more films in the future. The more awareness of our films, the more we can make. You can find a link to the channel in the description below of this video, or click on my channel and go to the section channels, and it will be there as we speak. And with that being said, guys, I hope you enjoy today's video. Well, what is going on? My name is Zell Prince, and welcome back to you. And that's another SCP related video. Now, in a previous SCP uh, reaction video near the end of June, I said I would check out a few SCP videos that popped up at the end of recommended that I was going to check out. I already checked out the grave one, the graveyard one. Now we're going to check out Inner Sanctum, SCP 1348. Like I said, there are certain SCP videos. Like I say, when it comes to my SCP related related videos, I usually check out SCPs I know I've never seen before, and this is definitely one of them that I've never seen before. So, with that being said, guys, we're gonna go right into this bad boy in three, two, one, Shabinga. The SCP Foundation has encountered so many bizarre and horrifying things at this point that you might think there would be nothing left in the world that could surprise them. But every so often, they happen upon something that even these experts in the anomalous were not prepared for. In the Jabal al-Druz mountains of Syria, they found one such thing. Well, actually, it wasn't a thing exactly. It was a place filled the with place. ancient secrets and unimaginable power. On March 6, 2006, IAEA monitors began to pick up radiation from within a cave complex, approximately 81 kilometers from El Tabar, Syria. They initially believed it to be a location of a Syrian nuclear reactor. A number of Israeli airstrikes were deployed against the site, and the destruction revealed three mysterious chambers within. The really? Israeli and Syrian governments both established contact with the SCP Foundation, and agents promptly responded to identify and contain the anomalies present in the cave complex. There they found not just one unusual thing, but three. Inside the cave complex, a humanoid entity was found carrying out some sort of ritual practice of unknown origins. It was reciting text in an unknown Southern Semitic language, hmm. as well as performing a variety of other Semitic. religious practices that have been redacted from official records to prevent unauthorized staff from attempting to perform them. These rituals have been designated SCP-1348-02. Zero two, zero to one. To prevent retraction of the veil protecting SCP 1348 03. But more on both of those later. Yeah, the where's one? Entity, designated SCP 1348 01 E, was promptly contained and offered food, water, and bedding. It declined all of those, and aside from occasionally speaking in an unknown language, the entity made no attempts to speak to Foundation staff. After three weeks in containment, the entity had a seizure and died. An autopsy was scheduled Wait, in order to died. understand more about the being and where it might have come from. What was it doing there? And what was it protecting? Well, that takes us back to SCP-1348-02. The specific details of the rituals have been kept secret due to the virulent mimetic nature of the ritual practices themselves. Huh. Those exposed to the practices have an approximately 38% chance of experiencing religious mania and an intense Religious desire mania. to join in and perform the ritual practices themselves. Ow. For unknown reasons, some people with specific ancestry are more resistant to this mimetic effect. The primary purpose of these rituals... Maybe those who weren't really religious are not uh, contracted by this fact. ...deemed to be keeping the veil covering SCP-1348-03 closed. SCP-1348-03 is the central chamber of the cave complex. Because of the high neutron flux present, this is the area that was originally believed to be the storage site for a nuclear reactor core, or for high-grade radioactive waste. Neither are actually present, and instead there is a rectangular chamber inside. 
Remote drone oh. investigation revealed an elaborately decorated room, decorated in a proto-Semitic style, with repeated motifs of rams, serpents, slaughtered bulls, wounded lions, hawks, and depictions of the SCP-1348-02 ritual practices. In the center of the room, there is a raised platform with a radius of 9 meters, surrounded by a cylindrical sheath made of beryllium bronze. At dawn, noon, and dusk, the sheath appears to retract and cause the neutron flux inside of the chamber to raise to deadly levels. Like beryllium, isn't that the strongest metal in that's been discovered in Russia? Or was that something a different type of metal? No one but those performing the rituals have been able to see within the sheath, and the celebrants performing the rituals have refused to say what they saw inside. So what about the humanoid SCP-1348-01-E? What did the autopsy find? External examination revealed that it was an anomalous human that originally had ten external limbs. Three of those limbs, both of its legs, and one of its many wings had been amputated. The being's body was injured in other ways, including missing eyes and crushing injuries to the frontal sinuses. The entity mm. did not appear to have any external genitals. An internal examination revealed the presence of a liver, lungs, heart, and brain, the absence of kidneys, and a lack of urinary tracts. There were no stomach contents, indicating that the being may have not needed to eat to survive. However, in a confusing turn of events, the cause of death was determined to be malnutrition. So Maybe the creatures receive nutrition from the ritual that they perform. Early guess, but it's probably going to be wrong. <laughs> Benjamin Kahn was assigned to head research into 1348, working alongside a research director known in the file only as Dr. X. Dr. X was the head of Containment Team B, the containment team assigned to the interior of 1348. In one of their containment meetings, Dr. Khan and Dr. X began to argue about the safety of the continued containment methods and the possible danger of the anomaly itself. Dr. Khan explained to Dr. X that the Overwatch Council was threatening to shut Team B down, asking, How are we supposed to protect civilians from what's in there if we don't know what it is? Dr. X responded, He's not too dangerous. At this time, Dr. X's teeth were falling out, and his skin was covered in sores from the radiation exposure. He insisted it was still not deliberately dangerous, saying, We're not protecting the world from him, we're protecting him from the world. Dr. Khan saw this as proof that the memetics of the rituals were beginning to affect Dr. X. Dr. X essentially confirmed this, saying, I used to think there was some mistake, then I passed the veil. Now I know it's all for the best. On December 5th, yeah, he's gone nuts. Dr. X was found unconscious in his quarters, suffering from radiation poisoning. His symptoms were severe, and it looked dire. Dr. Khan, desperate for answers, sought approval from the Overwatch Council to send an Omega-class ritual celebrant into the central chamber of SCP-1348-03, also referred to as the Inner Sanctum. When he emerged, the Omega-class was unresponsive for three days before eventually speaking. Dr. Khan conducted an interview with him to seek answers. Khan asked the man what he had seen inside, and he said, He is very old. He is hurting very badly. He is underwater, in space, and everywhere else. He cannot Ooh. get off his chair. He is stuck there forever because he is so badly hurt. Dr. Khan asked how the being inside became hurt. The man said, I think we did something bad. The song is about how bad we are. No, that's, that's wrong. We didn't do anything bad. We weren't supposed to happen. We happened. It wasn't our fault that we happened. He had trouble explaining himself, his mind swimming from the pain and the injuries. He continued, What he did saved us. Now he has to be punished. Now he has to stay behind the veil. Dr. Khan asked what the being was doing. The Omega class said, He was looking out. I saw that he saw us. We saw him. Others saw him. They weren't in the circle with us. They were standing outside the circle. Then we had to sing about how much he hurts because of us to make the veil close, so the others don't see him back. They are very angry. They don't remember things for very long, less well than me, I guess. The man was very tired and asked to rest and sleep, but Dr. Khan had one more question. Is he dangerous? The man shook his head and simply responded, He says he wants you to come home. He misses you. Because SCP-1348 cannot be transported anywhere, 
the Foundation put a series of containment measures in place on site and set up a containment team at the Site 87 Archaeological Containment Unit in the mountains where the <laughs> anomaly is located. The containment. What kind of godlike entity is this that requires continuous uh, rituals? It's not like the deer, where they just do that to just find, see, for its own pleasure to keep it contained. And that thing cannot be contained whatsoever. Well, effectively contained. The duties were split between two teams, Team A and Team B. These teams were allowed limited contact, with the exception of meetings between the directors and inter-team meetings in Conference Room 2A, in order to minimize any mimetic cross-contamination. Containment Team A was made up of Foundation employees recommended by Class 3 Site Supervisory personnel, and could be disqualified at any time for one of these reasons. Membership in a religious faith, exposed to registered mimetic agents, and fluency in Amrak, Gez, or Aramaic. Team A was responsible for providing ritual mm. supplies necessary for the performance of SCP-1348-02, keeping an eye on civilian celebrants and Team B members, selecting those who would participate in all ritual behaviors, and providing updated daily protocols for the rituals. They were also responsible for developing and executing Protocol 228 Melaka, which Melaka. could only be carried out by personnel who have not been exposed to any recordings or transcripts of the rituals, or entered the inner sanctum of SCP-1348-03. Containment Team B was made up of members descended from Druz, Mandian, or Mizrahi Jewish populations. Hmm. Their ancestry was thought to make them more resilient to the mimetic effects of SCP-1348. I'm guessing it wasn't. It was the complete opposite. And allow them to perform the rituals of SCP-1348-02 without any adverse effects. They would follow strict guidelines to maintain purity in these rituals, including a specific diet. Team B members were only permitted to exit the containment area, access classified documents, or contact members of their families if written permission was given by the site director. These containment procedures remained in place for several years. However, in 2011, three days after the interview with O-9142 and the death of Team B's director, Site Director Khan did something that would change the containment procedures for good. He what prepared he a new instance of SCP-1348-02 and entered the inner sanctum without permission. He performed the ritual and proceeded into SCP-1348-03. He was never recovered from inside. The Foundation could not figure out what would motivate Dr. Khan to breach security in this way, to expose himself to danger and enter the inner sanctum. Perhaps they thought he was acting out of extreme distress following the death of his colleague. They investigated all of his personal writings, his belongings, his emails, anything that could give them a clue about what had been going on in his mind. Some time later, a letter was returned unopened to Dr. Khan's home address and they got their answer. The what contents of the letter caused the Foundation to suspend Containment Team B, believing that their ancestry was no longer sufficient protection from the mimetic effects of SCP-1348. The letter was from Dr. Khan to his daughter Judith. He began the letter by saying that it was the last one he would ever write. Clearly, he knew he was going to die soon. In his letter, he confessed his work for the Foundation and apologized to her for his actions throughout her life. He was absent a lot of her life. While she believed he was some kind of spy, in truth he was working for the Foundation and forced to hide that from her. He apologized to her for disowning her over religion, abandoning his relationship with her when she married, and left to study the Torah and dedicate herself to her faith. He wrote, But I was wrong, Judith. What does the Torah tell us? That the name once moved upon the water, that he broke bread with Abraham, that he wrestled with Jacob and broke his thigh, that he buried Moses in the clay beside the Jordan. But now the te what? <laughs> temple is in ruin. The people of Moses are scattered, and we have lost even the name. For so long I have stood on the edge of the chasm which separates us, demanding that he explain. When you married Elizir, and you covered your hair, I thought you were abandoning me. But you were seeking after the name which I had abandoned, unafraid to cast your forgiveness into the depths of the mystery. If you were unafraid, even as a child, why have I hesitated for so long? He planned to face the mystery, to look into the depths that he avoided for his entire life. He concluded the letter, detailing his plans to breach containment and walk into the heart of SCP-1348. It is late. I am tired. Tomorrow I will anoint myself with oil. I will bathe in the font, and I will speak his terrible name. When the sun rises, 
I will stand before my broken father and the fathers who were broken before him, as someday you will stand before him. I will be held to account for my absence. I will hold the name to account for his, and I will forgive him. Who knows what happened once Dr. Khan passed through the veil into the inner sanctum, giving himself up for what he believed in. Maybe he did find and share that forgiveness and attain the peace he so desperately sought. Perhaps in his communion with the injured protector, trapped forever behind the veil, he could find the strength to forgive himself too. Now go check out SCP-001 Scarlet King Dust and Blood. And Alright, well, that was a little difficult to keep track of. The only thing I kind of truly understood about that whole thing with the with SCP-1348 was that it had something to do with religious values. And if these values were not followed, something catastrophic would come forth. That's all I could truly understand from that, because I'm not, well, religious myself, per se, so doesn't, I don't really understand that. But anyway... Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's react video. Please like and subscribe all that stuff guys and I will see you in the future.